Hello there, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, James here as ever, for today's very important ACCA video, especially if you've got your upcoming corporate and business law, that's the LW or F4 exam. My name is James, and in today's video, I'm going to take you through the syllabus and study guide, my full analysis as an ACCA qualified member, as my channel is 100% student-led, and this has been highly, highly highly requested and also just to add it is completely free now i'm going to be going through the actual syllabus and study guide for the uk english paper but this video is going to be applicable to if you've got the botswana cyprus hong kong ireland lesotho malta malaysia russia singapore vietnam south africa or zimbabwe paper literally i'm just going to take you through all of my insights that you can apply to whatever paper you are doing and if you are watching this before September 21 or after August 2022, the actual syllabus doesn't get updated too much. Plus, these tips and tricks are definitely going to help you out. So if you're watching it before or after that date, make sure you keep watching to the end. The tips are going to help you out from all of my experience. If this is the first time you visited my channel, my name is James. I'm an ACCA qualified member from the UK. And my channel is set up to help ACCA students around the world, wherever you may be, as you could see from the list of all of the potential exams that you have here where people are sitting them around the world. And I produce free content based on my subscribers and people who follow me on Instagram because this has been highly requested, should I say. So I always dedicate my videos to my loyal subscribers out there and today is no different. So, I know you're out there, Aaron, and uh, Jobin, dropping me messages on Instagram requesting F4 videos. Do not worry, I have got you on this. This video is dedicated to you. Also, I mean, I couldn't forget my lovely subscribers on here who leave me loads of comments and requests in the videos. I reply to absolutely all of them, and as ever, today is no different. So, Roseanne, I know you're out there. Thank you so much for leaving me a comment and as you can see I'm here, Roseanne's from Scotland, just started her ACCA journey, currently studying her first module which is the actual corporate and business law, the English exam. I think this might actually help you Roseanne. Um, I'm self-funding my way through the course, well you're lucky because all of my materials are completely free, so make sure you share this video if you know someone out there who's also got that upcoming corporate and business law exam. Wish me luck and thanks. Well, Roseanne, today's video is also dedicated to you, and best of luck with it. Well, I'm going to actually go through the actual syllabus and study guide, as I said. If you click the link in the description to this video below, it's going to take you directly onto ACCA's website. You can access this free resource, and you can take some notes as we go through the video. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe so you get access to all of my free materials. And leave me a comment at the bottom if you'd like me to do any other law or any other ACCA videos that you would like to request. And finally, I mean, of course, you'll see all the details it goes through. So make sure you give the video a massive thumbs up below so that uh, the, the actual YouTube knows that uh, you like the video. And I don't know why I just called it the YouTube. But either way, let's get stuck onto it. I'm going to head on to the main screen now. Finally, actually, I've just remembered, if you haven't already got any books for this, I get questions on it all the time. I've left the links in the description below from all of the recommended texts that I would purchase if I was in your shoes having to pass this exam. So they're all down there for you. Check it out along with the free link to get access to this free resource. So without any further ado, let's head on to the main screen and let's get started. Three, two, one. Okay then, so this is the document in question. You can pull this up on your computer screen. If, as I said, if you click the link in the description of the video, it's gonna take you straight on there. And we've got a nice, lovely breakdown on here, but there is, I will admit, a lot of information <laughs> when you go through it. Loads of free resources. But uh, if this is the first time you've actually looked into doing the law exam, oh my word, that could look a bit overwhelming. Oh, as my subscribers would say, wouldn't it be joyous for James to write some notes on there to help us all out? As ever, would I let you down? Would I let you down? Well, pen and paper at the ready. As I said, I'm going to take you through all of my notes, insights as we go through, short and sweet. So that, as I said, whichever actual exam you're doing this for, whether that's Botswana, Cyprus, Hong Kong, Ireland, 
Let's so throw Malta, Malaysia, Russia, Singapore, Vietnam, South Africa, or Zimbabwe. You are going to have tips going through this. So as you can see on here, this is nice and easy content. You might also just want to get noted down, as I mentioned at the start of the video, it was also previously known as F4. So if you see any other resources online, that is what it relates to. The other key thing, especially if you've got the exam tomorrow or if you've got the exam in a few months time, I think it's really critical that you're aware that there are 85% uh, of people actually pass this exam, which is one of the highest for ACCA, but it does mean that 15 in every 100 do fail it. And I'm going to be going through exam tips throughout this video, so make sure you've got your pen and paper, watch to the end, because that could be the difference between you getting into that 85% or not making it. But I'm going to take you through all of the contents now, nice and easy. So I've done all the work for you. And also, it's just going to give you insights that, you know, what I sort of read through this if I was in your shoes from my experience on here. So let's start from the intellectual levels, as you can see on here for number one. And I'm underlining the word specific on here and levels one and two. So this is the required standard that you need to be at to actually, pa actually pass this exam. So demonstrating knowledge and uh, comprehension, application and analysis. These are the key words they use in the external examiner's report. And if you aren't able to actually demonstrate knowledge, application and analysis are really in section B of the examination, which we'll come on to later. It's the area where students tend to really fall down on a load of marks. But the key thing to actually get down here in your notes for specific, because the whole of the syllabus can be tested for the actual law exam. And what, it, what I'm trying to get at here is that don't be expected if you see something in the exam that you have no idea about. I've had a look through the external examiner's report and there are some real specific uh, references made to particular laws or uh, particular standards on there as well. So always write that down to not get overwhelmed or flustered in the exam because you're not going to be able to remember absolutely everything. But I'm interested in taking you through what are the key aspects and what's that standard that you need to be hitting. As you can see, I'm on the left hand side here, all the key information and notes are on there. So make sure you're getting these jotted down as we go through. Now, as you come on to one here, it's actually saying what subject areas and giving you an indication as to the intellectual depth, which an area could be assessed within the examination. So this is where you'll see sort of one, two and three, and that correlates to one, two and three up here. So it's just trying to get you accustomed to what it actually means. But let me showcase what this actually relates to in regards to the overall syllabus and oh look at all these notes James James can we go back can we go back I'm going to come back to them don't you worry but just so you're aware so you can take it down your notes this is the actual detailed study guide we'll be coming on to later but as you can see on here the little ones on the top there and the number two so if you see number twos that means you've got to know it in a bit more detail whereas number ones it's more sort of um, general knowledge associated with it if you're asking yourself oh James why can't I see any sort of threes well, that really relates to the more of the strategic and also professional papers that you'll see going on, going further on. OK, so that's, that's just a little overview so that you know. And just a final piece down here. And as ever in my videos, I'm only trying to highlight the key aspects that relate directly to you for the specific law exam. And as you can see on here, so some uh, lower level skills can be can continue to be assessed throughout uh, the actual exam process. So from doing law, what other exams does it relate to? And the knowledge really carries forward into financial reporting, audit and assurance, and actual SBR as well. But the actual key thing here is that I find that law is actually integrated and you can use it in some of your answers, not just in that, but the tax papers as well, and SBL. So it's really key that you hang on to your notes on top of that and, and bring them all together that you can get marks in future exams by referring to certain laws and knowledge that you'll gain from this exam. So don't overlook it, I would say. Finally on there, you've got bits on learning hours and education recognition. So maybe this is your actual first ACCA exam. So maybe you've done AAT or ATT, something on those lines, or you've been at an institution and it's your first professional exam. It, it's all about working smarter and not harder. So after this exam, get it written down to check out my ACCA study tips. I've done loads on there from the actual computer-based examinations, how to study more effectively, and what I'd do differently if I had to go be a student again. And that I advise to all my students as well on top of it. So carrying on through this as well, we're now coming on to the actual structure of the ACCA qualification. And this is where it's really going to help you 
um, with it being sort of uh, the F4 paper, so usually the fourth in line, this is where you just need to sort of picture where you're at in terms of the actual structure or to become a natural ACCA member. And I'm going to give you a few more insights on here to actually get jotted down. So this is where you are, first of all, here for the corporate law and business law. So I've put you a little note on there just so you're aware. And if you haven't already, make sure you've done all your applied knowledge exams first of all beforehand. So covering on there, business technology, financial accounting and management accounting. Corporate and business law, I always recommend is the first one to do straight away after that. And if you're watching this video thinking, well, what other exam could I do with it? Well, I'd actually recommend you do financial reporting with it as well. So I've put a few little arrows on there. It can be pretty tough, this exam, but it all depends on your sort of commitment. I have done a video on what's the sort of perfect strategy going through ACCA from start to finish. So feel free to check that out after here. But the corporate law and business law falls into place with taxation. There'll be tiny elements in performance management, but more likely to come up in audit and assurance. And also you've got financial management to contend with before going on to more of the actual strategic papers up there. But it's just to give you a bit of an insight if you wanted to do it with another exam, I recommend financial reporting or potentially on top of that, if you've already done financial reporting, possibly financial management. But again, it comes down to the scenarios as to when you're actually doing it in regards to tax as well, because the actual rates change. Now, coming on and swiftly moving on to the actual guide to the ACCA exam structure and delivery mode. Now, the first key thing to get down here is we are looking for that pass mark. And for you to pass your upcoming law exam, you're going to need 50% plus. Again, just to note it out there for anyone who is particularly new to ACCA exams, or this may be the first video you're watching on it. The actual exam itself is a two hour computer based objective test examination for English and global papers. So this falls in the applied skills that we've just looked at above. And key note to get down here that it's a two hour exam. You've got 100 marks to actually try and gain and obtain. So that means it's 1.2 minutes per mark. Time management is one of the key areas where students fail this exam on. So make sure you've got that down. I'm going to come down to a better strategy as well how to lay it out, how to structure it um, later on into the video. So make sure you stay to the end. As you got on here, we've also got the approach to the examining uh, the syllabus section. So coming on to this important section later on. So don't overlook that. And then finally on here, so excluding corporate and business law. So the, the longer constructed response question types in the applied skills exams. So these are the foundation papers on here that we've just looked at above. So financial management, audit, all of those. So you're not expected to actually produce any constructive response questions for the LW or the F4 paper. Or in other words, what it's saying to you there is you're not going to be required to write paragraphs and paragraphs. It's all going to be tick boxes using the actual computer system on there. So that's a really key thing to get down. Going away from this, you can go watch my video on tips for computer based examinations and you can also use the practice format on ACCA's website. But make sure you're getting familiar with it, because again, that is tip number two as to why students fail this exam. They're not used to the format, they're not used to the structure and they're not used to actually analysing the questions effectively on top of it. Now, as you can see on the side here, you've got other elements for the strategic professional papers. That's going into a bit more detail. But also, as you can see on the side there, I've put my uh, your law knowledge will help at the strategic level on top of that. So knowing about different laws and standards, how it can be applied in a workplace. This is where it's going to be key. So make sure you hold on to your text. But that's the reason why I've not highlighted anything on there. I'm trying to keep it focused for what you need to be knowing ahead of your law examination. That is the key thing. I've already touched on it before, actually, for uh, time management. And ACCA put this in all of their syllabus guides because students continually find time management a key aspect. And I've just underlined some of the key aspects on here, as I said. So read questions carefully uh, to plan your answers. So if you actually go to the external examiner's report, I've done a video on this as well. And they always mention about identifying the distractors. So make sure you've got that written down when you're going through question practice. Say to yourself, what is the distractor answer here? And, and what that means is some of the answers are going to be completely not true and completely wrong. They're all designed to throw you off and to put you under a bit of pressure under that exam condition. So make sure you go check it out. 
um, get it into your actual technique when you're going through questions and just ask yourself and get this written down how can that be right to what the requirement is asking me in other words when you look through the answers you just go well it could be that could be that but that is a complete no-go that is a distractor it's just there to try and put me off and I've done some other videos on this as I said so feel free to check them out at the end of this all about reading the question carefully planning your answers because I always find one of the reasons why students fail this exam if you look at the bottom there information in exams uh, require properly read uh, are required to be properly read and understood um, so when you actually do your first computer-based examination you'll see it's very tick boxy and you'll get um, answers being required to say well which two out of the following uh, which of these are not true which of these are true um, which one of these are and then you go oh my word it, it's all designed to sort of trick you into saying have you understood what is going on in that specific uh, scenario especially for section C so just get that written down read the question effectively pick up on any distractors and then break down what it is asking me for so that I answer it effectively. I mean, if it asks for two options, make sure you put two because they mention that in the actual external examiner's report uh, for silly mistakes. Now, we've got um, the, the, uh, the guide to ACCA examination assessments now, so on here. So for financial accounting, law, assurance on here, um, ACCA will publish examinable documents once a year. I mean, hence why we're going through this video right now. There are others on ACCA's website, so feel free to check them out. They're all really, f uh, really free. They are free. <laughs> so, it, they're all designed to help you out, but it just amazes me how many people don't actually make the most of them. And as I've highlighted on here, so this applies to the actual law exam, um, and all updates are at the end of this document. Now, as I said at the start of the video, this is, this is starting for September 2021, and I've had a look at the, uh, the other document before that, and... Well, there weren't any changes on it so nothing to worry about so I thought I'll analyze this there was a small little update we'll come on to that at the end but this is where if you're watching this video um, after the end date of 2022 in August then just have a look at the end see what's updated follow the tips through in this video and you got a really good chance of passing on there but it's just showing you when the actual changes come into effect um, after sept uh, for September going forward on there for your examinations that's it um, and finally on here We've got the study guys um, offers more detailed guidance on the depth and level at which the examinable documents will be examined. Lovely stuff. The study guide should therefore be read in conjunction with the examinable documents list. Well, don't panic, <laughs> as I put on there. I've done an external examiner's uh, documents list, plus I've been through the external examiner's reports. There are so many good tips through that as well. Trust me, if you watch that video of mine, I think you've got a really good chance of getting into the 85% that will pass this exam as long as you're going through and doing practice questions which we'll come on to now so we've got the actual relation diagram linking corporate and business law now so this is the english version so just double check it to whichever version you're doing around the world key thing on here but i've underlined some key aspects that link into what the external examiners and the markers say about underpinning knowledge and reviewing previous learning before taking and studying this so if you've got any previous law experience, bring it to the table. But the key thing is about underpinning knowledge because it, it actually transfers that forward onto other exams. So make sure you save your notes once you've actually completed this exam, because as you can see on here, it links into SBR, uh, financial reporting, audit and assurance. But I mean, I would say you can apply some of the actual knowledge of the business and law exam into various others. Taxation is definitely one on top of that. So don't overlook it, retain that knowledge. And uh, if you only just scrape through a pass on this, definitely keep your notes together because they will help in the future as well. Coming on to part seven now, again, trying to keep it as short and sweet as possible, approaching uh, or approach to examining the syllabus, should we say. So what I've put on there, watch the F4 examiner's report review. Uh, this will definitely help you out in more detail. That's on my channel. Feel free to check it out after this. But this is the key breakdown, as you can see on here, between section A and section B that you need to be aware of before your law exam. As we've already touched on, it's a two hour computer based exam, but this is where the syllabus will be applied. And it's broken down nicely, as you can see on here in section A and section B. But the key thing for you to get noted down, because they mentioned time management at the start, 
And I'll mention it again, why students fail this? It's because they run over time for it, basically. Uh, and you can see, I'll put it on the side there, for section A, for 70 marks, at 1.2 minutes per mark, that's 84 minutes in total. And then for section B, 30 marks on there gives you 36 minutes. And the, the section A questions are um, OTQs, or objective test questions, and the, the, the available options overall for this are the six on the side. So multiple choice, multiple response, matching, number, number entry, and gap fill. Usually for this paper, you get lots of uh, multiple choice and multiple response on there. That's the key aspect to be writing down, but it's just so you get a flavor for it because it will come up in other exams as well. Now, coming on to section B, you've then got um, five, six mark MTQ questions or multi-task questions on here. And these are more and really key to get this down because this is the area where students tend to lose the majority of the marks on. These are more scenario based questions, a bit more difficult, I have to admit to you as well. Um, as I said, the area that the students find the hardest. And this is where the analysis and application comes into it. So really you get knowledge in section A up at the top there, and then it goes into various different details, but analysis and application that the actual uh, examiner who put together this document, uh, mentioned it at the start, falls into section B. So that's where the little number twos, what we'll come on to at the bottom, are more regularly tested in section B. And multiple choice usually in this section on top of that. What's another key element to write down here that I picked up in the external examiner's report was lots of students tend to get the, uh, the one mark uh, out of the 20 questions there perfectly fine. But they tend to struggle a lot more on the two markers, and you've got 25 marks of those, and then the most difficult part is section B. So when you're focusing your energy on where to actually revise this, this exam, that is sort of a, a sort of priority level, three steps I would say, as to well the one markers are going to be slightly easy on there, the two markers are a bit more harder, and then section B is top notch on there that I'm going to have to put more time into it. And the more question practice, the better off on there. So all questions are compulsory. You can't question spot. Then um, we'll see it again further on that they test all of the actual syllabus. So I'm going to walk and talk you through all of that. But I've just put some other key notes at the bottom there. So make sure you get that jotted down. That again, the time management, we've got it on the side there is really key. Reading the question and answer carefully because students misinterpret what it's actually asking for and that is where mistakes are made and where you miss out on the marks. The core knowledge and question practice on this exam is absolutely paramount. You are going to make mistakes. So a really good way of getting around this is that have an attempt to say computer-based test or whatever it may be, whatever resources you have, and then any questions you get wrong, just simply write down on a piece of paper anything you didn't know. And what will happen is over time, that will just build up, build up, build up, and you'll have a really good solid bank of stuff that you weren't aware of. That's perfectly fine. This is a really wide actual syllabus, but at least you're condensing it down so that on the day of the exam, the night before, the week before, you can keep reading it through and you'll know it for next time. Trust me on that. I used to do it all the time. I've also got on there leave time to check your answers. So when it says 84 minutes and 36 minutes for section B, Maybe you can actually get those done a lot quicker, giving yourself five, 10 minutes to actually review this. So instead of it taking 84 minutes to do the 70 marks, well, could you do it in say an hour and 10, leaving yourself 14 minutes to go back and review because you will make mistakes. So you need to go back with a sort of clear mindset approach, have a sip of water, deep breath, deep breath as well, and then just go in with a real critical mindset to say, James, I've made mistakes here, I'm gonna find them, and this could be that little one or two marks that just push me into that 50 plus, onto the next exam, happy days, thumbs up, all good. That's what I would be thinking. Um, and also, if you want to maybe, you could maybe cut down section A into 80 minutes and give yourself another four minutes in section B, just because that is where most people take more time because the questions are a bit more difficult. But whatever works best with you, at the end of the day, the more question practice you do, the better off you are going to be, I would say, along with writing down any mistake areas. Now, we come on to the uh, introduction to the syllabus on here. And it, I've tried to break it down, as you'll see um, on, on the comments on the side, as to general and specific again. 
So the corporate and business law is divided into eight areas. So we'll be coming on to those uh, eight areas below. You've got to get those jotted down. I'll, I'll make sure they're highlighted for you so you can get that written down. There are eight areas. Don't panic. It's not too bad. But that, that links into the sort of general knowledge on this actual examination that you have to be aware of. From the eight, you could get some simple one mark questions, probably two markers on there as well that you need to be aware of. So this is the difference between a one versus a two. And when you get into the specific legal areas, so have a look on here as to just, again, you can pause the video now just so you can get it down. These are the sort of general areas that you're more likely to see in a one mark question. So the syllabus starts with an introduction to the overall English uh, legal system on here. Okay, so that's the first thing to get written down, such as court systems, sources of law, those three key things. It then leads into areas of law of obligations, next key thing to get down, including contract, tort, and uh, underpin business transactions generally. So I've just tried to put emphasis on the uh, words and phrases there. You should have seven down for sort of general areas. Then you get onto the syllabus where it's now saying, telling us about specific legal areas relating to various aspects of business uh, of most concern to financial professionals. Okay, so financial professionals on there, that's gonna be a scenario based thing. These are uh, the law relating to employment, law of employment, key thing to get down, and law relating to companies. These laws include the formation, uh, constitution of the companies, and the financing of companies, uh, types of capital, day-to-day -day management, and as you can see on here, the administration, regulation of companies, and legal aspects of insolvency law. So that is going into more detailed questions that you're gonna see for two markers or potentially on section B. The final section links back to all previous areas. So in other words, this section deals with corporate fraudulent and criminal behavior. So another two to, you know, could go into the section B marks on there, but it just gives you a nice little breakdown what to expect. And you'll see it when we go through those key areas at the bottom. Now, another area, highly underrated, I would say, and as you can see from my notes, 100% you need to get those written down and to be checking them off in your revision. So upon a successful completion of this exam, which you will do because you're watching this video, you've got to go through those letters A to H and be competent and confident, shall I say, going through each of them on there. But the really good thing is, and I'm not gonna read them out, you can go through them in your own time, it's okay, or get a screenshot now, whatever works best. It, this is really helpful if you're not from a law or legal background like I was. So it just puts it into perspective that, as you can see on here, we've got the essential elements of the actual legal system, how they flow into the law of obligation, employment law, formation, constitution of business organizations. These are the key words that we've just seen up above in that paragraph as well to get written down in your notes. And capital and the actual financing of companies. So from the formation and constitution of business organizations, so you might see this in a scenario section B, think about capital and financing of those companies. Then you've got the management administration, sounds familiar, we've read it before, regulation and insolvency law. So that's another thing how it flows. And then finally at the bottom, not to be overlooked, the corporate fraudulent and criminal behavior. So could be an example of this would be bribery, for example, on there. So it's also, as I've just put it on the side, how it all sort of clicks together. And if you're not from a law background, this is a really key page. Get it noted down if you're ever having one of those days where you go, I'm really not sure what's going on here and I don't really understand where that sort of fits in. We'll relate it back to this page on here and it's definitely gonna help you. I've put a final point at the bottom here as to 100% agree with this, that the diagram, let me put it all in screen for you, the diagram illustrates the flows and links between the main capabilities of the syllabus. Exactly, I mean, if you're not from a law background, you, you've never particularly dealt with any insolvency law or, or obligations or employment law, and uh, it should aid in actually planning and teaching and learning in a structured way. So if you're un unsure that maybe a topic area where it links into, head back onto here, see where it flows, see where it links, and that is definitely gonna help you out. Now, we mentioned it up above with the eight critical areas. This is where you need to get this down. Every one of them highlighted in yellow. These are the critical areas you need to be aware of. And my advice going on to this is, well, first of all, if you can, print out this page with none of my notes on, and actually go, and when you're going through in your revision, tick them off one by one. That would definitely help you out. Um, but question practice on each of these eight areas, 
maybe have a sheet for anything that you got wrong on a particular area, write it down and you're going to remember it a heck of a lot better. Then, as I said, check off what you've looked at in your core text, maybe question practice as well. It's all going to help build up your law knowledge. And then when we come on to the actual detailed study guide below, I'll, I'll just show you now for the essential elements of the legal system. So this one up here for part A. So this is where it goes into more detail. I've been looking through the detailed examination um, guide on here. If I've previously failed law before and probably a week before the exam so that I'm checking off everything. So as you can see on here, the essential elements of the legal system. So you've got law and the legal system, sources of law, which we saw, law and legal system, sources of law. And then what this detailed study guide does is it breaks it down into those little areas with the ones and the twos, as we said, that if you go through this and check them off one by one, you are going to be absolutely spot on and fine going through this. So I've also put on here some little red lines because it's a bit, it's a bit awkwardly laid out so that that separates it out for part A on there. And what it means is, so you can see part B here, it goes one all the way down to H. And then if you come back at the top, there's two. So the law of obligations is this bit here and this bit here as well. So it just nicely flows on just so you can follow it through nice and easy. And it's got absolutely everything broken down here. I'll be going through them one by one, checking them off. And you'll start to see more and more familiarity when you're doing more question practice. A really helpful area to refer back to, check off one by one. And psychologically, if you can go through this and say, yes, I'm comfortable with insolvency law and the points from A to E. Well, going into that exam, no matter what you got tested on, you can have a really good go at getting the correct answer on that. Finally on here, just something for you to be aware of, we've actually got the summary of any changes to the corporate and business and law. So this is, this is for England, so check off whichever one you're doing, if it's Malaysia, if it's South Africa. And this relates to September 2021 to August 2022. And as I said before, for the English paper beforehand, uh, before September 2021, there were no changes, so happy days. That's why I thought I'd analyze this one. As you can see at the bottom, because the change here was the uh, was in regards to the law and the legal system where we had the removal of the European Court of Justice, and that was as a result of, of Brexit for the reason of change. So just check for actual your exam, which one you're doing, and then you can refer to whichever year you're going to be actually looking through. But the tips we've gone through in this video, you're gonna be absolutely spot on. Um, and we've got no changes pre-September 2021 on there. Um, check your specific exam. Also have a look on here. This is really, really key. What your employer, if you're actually on a study contract, which paper they want you to do. The English one was the one that I looked at online, the one I did and what most people tend to do. That's why I did the video for it. But others have specifics depending on where they're working, if that's Ireland or Malaysia or whatever it may be. The other final thing at the bottom, I just I had to make a note of it because I thought it was really, really key to help you out is, especially if you're not from a law background or you're completely new to, the, new to this, and you just want to get more of a feel for what it could be like or how it would be uh, applicable to the real world, make sure you read the actual technical articles available on ACCA's website for free. So you can just pop it in on a search engine, ACCA uh, technical articles, pull it up, read the most recent ones, and then you'll start to piece together the core knowledge that you're building up within the actual corporate and business law uh, cortex, whatever one you're reading. And that is definitely going to help you out on there. If you're struggling for recommended texts, as I said, I've put links to the ones I recommend in the description of this video. So feel free to check them out. They're down there with loads of other study uh, tips and resources that I used to use as a student and I'd be using myself just to help me out because it helps you remember all of the, the various different areas, uh, especially with the eight sections in this. Well, as you can see, that, that's, that's taken us all the way through here now. So let's head back to the main screen on three, two, one. Well, Roseanne, job in, iron, what do you think of that? That, in my eyes, is how you go through the syllabus and study guide, full analysis, and if you follow these tips and tricks through in your examination, along with everyone else who's watching this video, you have got a real good chance of being in the 85% to pass your upcoming corporate and business or exam. If you have found today's video helpful, which I really hope you have, make sure you give it a massive like and thumbs up below so that more ACCA students can see this content. Also, feel free to leave me a comment if you'd like more law videos to be made and also what you thought of the video as well. As ever, 
feel free to subscribe. I mean, all the videos are completely free, accessible to you, and you'll get all of my updates, but make sure you share this video with someone who you know that is doing the law exam because you know it's definitely going to help them out. That is the main thing. Well, the last thing I can say is, best of luck with your upcoming examination for the corporate and business law. Let me know how you get on. Let me know how you get on on Instagram. Ping me a message, and I really hope the video has helped. What I've done for you is I've left a couple of videos at the end here. Click one of them. They are definitely going to help you in your preparation for this exam. But as always on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers.